our resident Mary Gibb looking UFO reporter John Hudson has all the latest details on the latest and greatest in the UFO world because the news seems to be changing every couple of days. John, how are you, buddy? Doing pretty good. Pretty good, Dave. How about yourself? Good. That beard and hair combination is looking great, man. Well, I appreciate you saying so, but actually the, the beard just temporary to, so I can realign the, the goatee and everything. I've got to do this every you know like year or so. You know, just you know, you, you know how it is keeping things in symmetry. Now, are you dyeing the color, or is that natural? Uh, it's mostly natural. I have to, I have to dye a little bit because I'm getting a little white into it. But yeah, I, I dyed yeah, a little I bit. Yeah, like. I don't know yeah. what that's like. Yeah, I really don't. But uh, no, man, we'd love to uh, see you. You know, test out that beard and hair combination. We got people asking if the fedora will make its way down to Las Vegas for for our big event that we're going to have there, April twenty second to twenty fourth. Uh, well, I mean, all all plans are yes. Uh, it, it all greatly depends on uh, on whether the job gods um, take pity on me and and uh, and grant my 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 most recent uh, request. But uh, but assuming that all comes into play, I will be there with bells on. All right, I love Las Vegas. It's my backyard. I gotta ask you, man. You sent me a picture of Van Halen today. Oh what yeah, yeah. Just it was just I, I started following this account on Twitter. They just post these crazy, really old pictures of cool bands, like old photos of like Beastie Boys and Van Halen, and like all. The, and some of them, every once in a while, I see one where I'm like, "Hey, Dave would like this," so I forwarded it to you. I appreciated that, man. One of my yeah, first I, albums that I ever got as a kid, well, aging myself, albums, people, albums, was 1984. With you know, and and you know, you think about it. Remember the Nirvana cover, John, where they oh, were yeah. that ba the dude who played the baby came out saying that he was now offended and and cancel culture oh, and wanted wow. to sue Nirvana for putting wow. him on the cover, even though his parents signed off on it and agreed to it. I, you know, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm wondering yeah. why the baby on the Van Halen cover never did that. I mean, with a putting angel wings on a naked baby, hey, holding no, no, no. A, 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 a lit cigarette. How about Bumblebee Girl from the Blind from the Blind Melon song? Right? I mean, like, uh, was it not with Blind Melon? No, was it Blind Melon? No it was, rain. Um, no but, rain. Yeah, yeah, no rain. Yeah, it's like, dude. I mean, don't get me wrong. Love the song. Really did. Actually, was a fan. But that poor Bumblebee Girl. Like, boy, if anyone has justification for a lawsuit, it's her. Oh, I'm sure she got paid very well for that. Yeah, let's, yeah. Here's hoping. I'm hoping she did, you know, but apparently according to major Lee in the chat room, that court case got thrown out for oh. the Nirvana guy, Nirvana baby. Oh yeah. 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 I can't, can't 1984. Well, yeah. I remember the, the first time I heard jump. Oh my gosh. And when they, they would crank it every week, almost every week on Friday night videos on NBC. I, I used to, I used to listen to the album when I was, um, uh, cutting trees in my in my grandmother's yard. So like I have these summers where I just have these incredibly fond memories of like these two three week periods just out in the California sun, climbing trees, cutting them down, listening to this album over and over and over and over again, and just oh man, such fond memories. Are you are you a Dave guy, a Sammy guy, or a com combination guy? Uh, you know, I really I really almost see them as two different bands. Um, because, um, I was not a Sammy Hagar fan before he joined Van Halen, but I gotta say, I, I like what he does with that band. I really do. I, I really like what, he, and, and his voice is just, and that is just in, in an orbit all on its own. And, and, and the thing was, was that he was as much of a personality in a different direction as, as Dave was Dave. I will, I will, I will always, I will always love Dave, uh, just a gigolo is still like one of my all-time favorite videos ever. So, you know, it, it, it's a hard pass. Yeah. John always likes to boobity boobity bop, zitty bop. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Love you that know? stuff. Love that stuff. I don't believe, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I was a mixture of both. I love David and I love Sammy. Eric Sharon from Extreme sounded terrible with Van Halen trying I to sing every song. Dude, it was terrible. He was trying to sing every song like it was an extreme song. It was, it, it was horrible. It, it, it was horrible. Mm. Like, that one mm. needs to be. And, and I'm very happy that it never gets talked about. You know? Yeah, yeah. But you can imagine the conversation between the two brothers. They're sitting there going, like, what's wrong with us? 
We're both obviously great musicians. Everyone likes what we do. Why can't we find a damn singer? This shouldn't be this damn hard, you know? Like, I can just imagine the conversations at 3 a.m., you know? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, it, it's the same thing as, like, does anybody remember John Karabi for that one album on Motley Crue when Vince Neil left? Oh, oh no. I, no, I, I forgot that oh. even happened. Well, that's like asking about those those Duke cousins that that, that drew over to General Lee for one season, and, and you know, no one yeah. remembers that either. So it's like, yeah. Oh my God, what were what were the names of the Duke cousins? Hold on, where are oh, the man. names? Were... It was so man. sad too because they didn't even just hire two good looking normal guys; they hired two people that look as much like the original actors as they possibly could. <laughs> so bad. Yes. <laughs> so bad. And and then there was they were Coy and Vance Duke. That's right, Coy and Vance. Coy now, and Vance. They, they got a whole season. They had a whole season, and at the end of that, in the middle of their season, the original cast finally renegotiated their contract because they were basically on strike. Was it, was oh yeah, was it, it was a contract dispute. dispute? Mm -hmm. Yep, it was. Okay, it was a contract dispute. Yep, and basically, basically the 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 actors, the the two the two main actors did not cave, and I the studio thought they would, and they didn't, and uh, and I think the studio thought they could pull it off with the cousins, and they couldn't. So I think everyone had to eat a little bit of crow on that one. Yeah, I, you know what bugged me is when they got rid of when they got rid of Enos the deputy for for Cletus. Couldn't and, stand. You know, Cletus had his value propositions, but 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 the only thing I kept hoping was that Ernest like left because he because he wanted to, you know. Because I mean that that yeah. that he was he was actually an outstanding actor. I mean, like no one no one picks up on it in that show, but he really was. He was a really good actor. All right, let's get to some UFOs here. No, let's just talk okay. to Hazard, man. I'm I'm good with that. Yeah, well, we'll we'll do that in the after show after we're <laughs> signed off the air. Uh, but there's a letter from the White House. Dated January seventh for UAP. What is this, this letter all about? So I just I I I, I got to read it quickly for the audience if, if everyone will bear with me. It, it's titled. It says, uh, "Thank you for writing. I generally appreciate your effort in making us aware of your concern regarding the UAP, but the mailing issue needs to stop promptly. As of September, we have received over five hundred letters requesting UAP disclosure from you. It's a little much." Uh, the late night uh, CE5 stances that you typically leave on our voicemail take up a consultant's time. And I am also unaware of Robert Lazar and the Chemical 115. Please stop asking. My staff has made a note. I will tune into the episode of Jimmy Church on, on multiple requests. Uh, I wish you the best in 2022 and look forward to our aerospace is secure in ufology and all is required in this learning uh, through K-12 schools in the United States of America. Sincerely, Joe Biden. And um, obviously, no one should take this seriously. Um, but um, but it's it's a beautiful letter in that um, it it touches on some very important points for for all of us to to be considering as we are indoctrinating uh, new folks into uh, into this sort of topic. You know the the challenges um, the challenges that they can have with both the veracity of say our passion and um, and the um, and also the, the 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 button issues that so many people have of you know 115 and Lazar and so forth, and uh, and the fact that you know realistically, if we actually got a letter like this, it would not be a bad thing if 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 a group of you actually sent 500 letters to to one person and they got all 500 of those, that's not a bad thing, right? So this isn't all jest, but. It, it to me it was just it was a beautiful letter to to uh, to begin the Friday uh, to Friday evening. Well, you know what? I don't know. Do we know who made it? Uh, you know, I don't. I was looking into it and then I ran out of time, so I I, I need to follow up on that. It, you know, it's, it's very it's very nice though. It's well done. Well, there's a couple of things where you know, kind of at first I thought, okay, maybe Biden is actually responding yeah. to this. But the minute I read Chemical 115, okay, <laughs> and then and then that I will tune into Jimmy Church. No offense, nothing against Jimmy Church. No, 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 okay. no, no. But Great still, note. yes, exactly. To have his name mentioned in a presidential letter, I can't imagine. 
um, yeah, no, this was um, this was just this was a beautiful piece of satire, and um, and um, I just I I really appreciate that kind of humor. I do. Some people, you know what? I'm going to say this: we're at least seeing the humor in this, but there's going to be a big portion in ufology who will be very offended by this letter because it's exactly what ufology doesn't need. That shows you the sense of humor that we have in UFOs right now. But it just, you know, it, it you know, the thing is, is that we are, we are, we are asking, we are asking a very large percentage of, of not just, uh, California or America, we're asking a large percent of the world to change and, and change in a very fundamental, deep and personal way. We are actually asking everybody to do that. And if we are asking everyone to do that, I think we can probably change a little bit ourselves and probably take heed of some of these humorous jokes and some of these rubs because among friends, they're often a warning sign of, of little behavioral things that could be corrected that could make conversations more fluid. True. Very true. There is going to be a major percentage of the UFO, uh, major being like 20, 25%, that are going to be like, this is what's wrong with ufology. Why would someone do this and put egg on our faces? Again. Again, John. I mean, there are a lot of people who will do that. I mean, we laugh I know, at but it. But Dave, but I can't tell you like the one, the one, the one thing I'm not enjoying about about more and more people talking about this is that I love it when friends and family you know come up to me at, at family gatherings and they bring up this whole topic. It's great, but I can't tell you how many times three sentences into it they lean forward and they go, "So, what do you think about Lazar?" And you're like, "Oh man." You tell them you believe them. It, it, it happens every time. It's amazing. I mean, it really is. It's it's an astounding thing. Yes, Bob Lazar's real. Bob Lazar's real. I, I believe. I actually. I. I firmly believe. I'll, I will say on the record. I firmly believe that what Bob Lazar has said, he believes. I have very little uh, data to to prove that what he believes happened actually happened at the degree and level that he believed it did. But I, I, I do believe that it, it, that he believes it happened. I really do. I, I don't, I don't think. I, I don't know. That's that's a great. It's what's one hell. If nothing else, it's a it's a great story. For the final time tonight, John Hudson, the unbiased UFO report continues as we're going to talk a little bit about Chris Mellon, who put out a blog trying to figure out why John Luis Elizondo has not yet been rehired by the United States Department of National Defense. What is your opinion on this? I am... I Okay, I, I get to say point blank. To me, this is one, one of the most shocking turn of events that I've actually personally seen in several months. Um, I, I'm completely blindsided by this. I'm baffled as to why he did this. Because the thing is, is that realistically it's unlikely that he's that he's going to really have any influence over that happening okay and so then the question becomes what why would he want people talking about it like even if it's not going to happen it's going to create dialogue so why does he want people talking about it why does he want it being considered especially because of the fact that several months ago you had people saying that they believed elizondo was going to go back to the government or that Mellon would, and essentially using it as a slight toward them in a way, saying, look, we can't trust them. They're going to end up going right back to the government. And here he is writing a letter saying, hey, government, why haven't you brought him back? So he's he's basically calling out what Lou's been accused of, of having planned as a good frontal course of action, which is a little odd, in my opinion, for someone to be calling out, at least so declaratively, uh, you know, what position one way or the other. And then for him to be doing this, what, what's his motivation? What is he really trying to get done here? Now, if you take all that aside and just read the letter, it's cool. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's nice, it's well-written, it covers a lot of interesting points. I wouldn't say there's anything about it that kind of jumps out at me as like, you know, really severe or really, you know, passionately interesting. But it was, a, it was, it was fun to watch. You know, it, what it is, it, it, it's a, it was a very nice professional defense 
of 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 a professional friend to another for on the behalf of another professional friend, and 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 at some level it was just that, and in, in that level it's just a nice thing to see. But the motivations and the goals and what people think they're actually going to get out of it, that part really baffles me. Look, we all know Lou is done. The minute he he signed off on the hired Daniel Sheehan, who is very well known in Washington, D.C., as well as filed those those claims with the, the ombudsman. Uh, what do you call it down there? Up here we call it an ombudsman. Oh no, but it, but yeah, the same idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it's based. It's the it's the it's the it's, it's the attorney general essentially. The attorney general down there, okay, about his claims about you know his emails getting waxed and them trying to erase his history. All right, I don't see him getting back in the DOD, but but yeah, I will say this: if they want to, if the military industrial complex really wants to shut this topic down like it looks like they want to according to susan go then you rehire them yes yes you rehire them agreed. And, and you increase his security level so he has no chance of talking ufos yep yep totally agree and, and, and because know, he's maintained a security clearance and because he's still working for a, a you know a, a, a defense contractor um, pulling him in would be actually very easy for them to do. Um, and the one thing I will say to your earlier point is that there are many, many people that are currently in lawsuits with the U.S. federal government that are currently employed by the U.S. federal government actively working for the same unit that they are suing. It mm -hmm. happens more than you think. So so, so uh, under normal circumstances, I would agree, a lawsuit like this would negate any chances. But in the case of the U.S. federal government, it might end up being part of a settlement. Do you think Lou goes back? No, but I think that he would like to under the right circumstances. I just don't think that they're going to create the kind of circumstances he wants. He needs to go back. Well, I mean, the chances are he'd probably get buried somewhere. And I'm not saying deathly buried, but I'm saying buried in a sure. back office. That right, is which is why, why I say I, I don't think he could get... I don't think he would, because I don't think he can get what I don't think he could get close enough to what he wanted to actually make it make sense for him. What do you think he wanted? You think he wants to run the entire program? No, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's so much as that he wants to personally run it. I think it's that he wants somebody to run it honestly. I think what he wants is he wants the result of the program to not get blocked for political or religious issues. I think he was concerned about the way the material was being um, digested or not digested by, by people upstream. And, and that, that was his sole problem. And so if that one thing got, if that got fixed for him and he actually started getting support and he actually started getting, you know, that, then he would essentially, I, I think he would really want to. Finally tonight, in the LA Times, there was an open letter to the editor complaining, how dare you, how dare you cover UFOs? What a silly topic to be wasting newspaper space on. And look, obviously this topic is going to have its detractors, but John, I disagree with this letter. I'm just going to say. Really? I'm shocked. Um, so the letter, which I'll put out later, um, it, it's, it's, it's the kind of stuff we're used to see, right? It's the kind of stuff we're used to seeing. Um, you know, he, he goes on and he says, you know, there is not one single piece of evidence of flying saucers and little green men have ever visited our planet. Uh, reliable uh, and relabeling UFOs as UAPs uh, doesn't change that reality. Um, you know, maybe the best you can do is show a, a photograph of a fake plastic, a, a, a photograph of a fake a plastic that has fallen onto an image of a plane, uh, of a video camera. I mean, th it, this is basically the classic dismissive, hasn't looked at anything, hasn't updated any information for a while and, and is incensed. He is, he is some, he is, he is, he has somehow gotten himself to the point where he is personally offended by this for whatever reason. 
and he is and but that's not what i find disturbing what i find disturbing is is that the times picked this as one of the two or three or four editorials that they considered that all the other readers should read as being representative of their readership that's the part that actually bothers me not what was written because i think there's always going to be a percentage of people that feel the way he does and he has every right to feel that way but yes. what i don't like is that they, they they put it on the on the top and 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 you know put lights around it as a, as a showcase well the other two seem to be uh wanting more truth more understanding of what is going on yes. you know this one gentleman robert lieberman types in one could make up all sorts of weird explanations for these remaining sightings cryptozoological flying spaghetti monsters mystical wizards witches spiritual ghosts sciency quantum fluctuations space-time bubbles or meteorological ball lightning but there until there is conclusive evidence one way or another all including that there are some sort of craft are equally probable keep an open mind and keep calm i mean this is a subject that is firing people up and you know what of course they're going to put the negative one up first the negative complaint of the letter of the editor i mean that's only obvious because that's how the paper is basically saying to the public without saying to it look we don't want to cover this crap but people are talking about it and so we're going to put the the piece that we agree with right up front this is the editor speaking about this not really speaking but in the moves that they made to set the paper up and they'll put the other two guys kind of on the other side that's kind of how it works right so but you know I, you think if you, if you wanted to if you wanted to present that opinion well you would have picked ones that argued better i mean this was a very juvenile argument that was given it, it's a common argument but it's not it's not a well it's not like a you know it's not like a well conceived you know oh i agree uh, I you agree. Know, so it, it's, but I mean, man, you can tell the emotion. Like oh, that yeah. guy was. That guy. Oh. We we should actually read it. Do you have it in front of you, or do you want me to grab it? Um, I I, I do, and and basically, you know, the the part, the part I find funny. I'll read the last part. Is the author of this op-ed article claims that in setting up this office, this new office that we're all so excited about, that Congress has legitimized the long ridiculed topic of UAPs. And he goes, no, it has not. It has merely debased itself further in the eyes of the public. I trust this office will also study leprechauns, as they may also pose a challenge to U.S. national security. I mean, that's that's some that's some venom. That is sarcasm, and and it's good. That's good sarcasm, by the way. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It was good. And and he's every every right to feel that way. Right, but I don't like it being showcased, and I do consider it to be a, a an old world way of thinking. It is, and, and and you know, just by the anger of this guy, you could tell he's done no homework, no homework, yes, on this subject. And, and I and, and, I, and I, I wish him all the best. And so do I. You know, he's allowed his opinion. He's mm -hmm. allowed to to feel however he wants. But you know what? At least the L.A. Times made the effort. I agree. I they totally made agree. the effort. And and, John, and they are and, and I like them covering both sides, like you said. Yeah, that's the way it should be. Point counterpoint. Yep. Yep. John, thank you for another great unbiased UFO report.